found myself in, um, in 2021, very broken. A Billings veteran's new memoir details life working inside a rock's infamous prison as she tries to heal 20 years later. We want to honor folks that have fought for us, um, died for us. Plus, a Billings group rallies to clean up the veterans cemetery. Hear how this tradition started and why it matters so much to those involved. And I'm Alina Howder. This great big pumpkin could be the largest ever grown here in the state of Montana. We'll tell you more coming up. The 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. It's been 20 years since U.S. armed forces invaded Iraq, marking the beginning of a nearly decade-long war. More than one million American troops served in the country during that time, including one Billings woman who is now putting her experience on paper. Our Diane Parker caught up with this soldier for a first look. A Billings combat veteran is unveiling a female soldier's truth in a new tell-all book called Shattered Reflections. It's helped her heal from trauma in the battlefield some 20 years later, and now she hopes it can help you heal too. June 27, 2003. I am not too sure how to put this day into words. I woke up this morning at 0700 with the intentions of going to the phone and calling mom. We pulled out of the prison. There was a very loud boom. I looked again and saw a body laying to the side. It's a chilling journal entry in its raw, unedited form, and you can read it in Dallas Knight's new book. When I went off to basic training, I was essentially training for war. 20 years later, Knight is taking on her trauma from the war zone in Baghdad, where she was a military police officer at the famous Abu Ghraib prison. She was one of only a few women in her unit. During that time, I kept a journal. I had this overwhelming need to open it because in 19 years, I hadn't read it. Every once in a while, I would open it up. Most of the time, I closed it, and I vowed to never open it again. It took six months and a therapist to help her get through all 88 journal entries written in pink and purple pen when she was just 19. My way of still embracing that feminine side. The right? choice of ink color came at a time when she lacked control of her daily environment, including what to eat, drink, rations, and using the bathroom. They dug a big trench as long as a football field. When they got full or nasty, they'd come over and fill in the trench and then dig another one. Those things aren't really discussed and people don't really know. But if you pick up a copy of this book, you'll know exactly what it was like serving as a woman among an abundance of men. At 19 was suppressing everything that told me that I wanted to be a female and respond with emotion, tried to act like a man, it's confusing and exhausting, but somewhat necessary. I watched this evolution of myself become emotionally walled off. Her reading, writing, and healing journey allowed her to fully process emotions one journal entry at a time. September 9, 2003, I am working out in the yard. I really don't like being out here because the prisoners are perverted and I feel really uncomfortable. Knight hopes her words help readers process their traumas too as they read every entry complete with footnotes and reflections. In Billings, Diane Parker, MTN News. Knight's book launch party is this Saturday night from 6 to 8 p.m. in downtown Billings at the St. John's United Ganans Commons. More than 4,000 Americans were killed in that conflict, some from here in Montana. One group took Wednesday to honor Billings fallen veterans in the best way they know how. Our Kelsey Boggs has tonight's Positively Montana report. It's pretty unusual to find half of the tree service companies in town gathered in one location, working on the same project. But that's exactly what's happening here at Mount View Cemetery. And tree service companies from across the Magic City are here lending a green thumb. Our nation's veterans are often viewed as our heroes. And it's cemeteries like this one, where many come to both honor. Obviously, we want to honor veterans. And remember them. Folks that have fought for us, um, died for us and this is their final resting place. My grandfather's a veteran buried in a cemetery in Michigan. But on Tuesday, <laughs> dozens gathered at Mount View Cemetery in Billings not to mourn, but to give back. Brian, my lead arborist from the, the tree service, he was participating in saluting branches in Helena, Montana. 
He asked me if we could start it here in Billings. Uh, we kind of led the charge on getting everybody together. That's right. Roughly 65 arborists from more than half of the tree trimming companies in Billings joined forces for saluting branches. Anytime you can get tree guys around a bunch of trees to cut, they're, they're happy. A project now in 49 states aimed at beautifying the final resting place of our country's veterans. Super important to my family and me personally to be able to be here. This is the heartbeat of Montana as a whole and people want to improve where they live, um, no matter what that looks like. And for Chandra Brown, it's especially personal. I was active duty Air Force as a hydraulics mechanic for four years as well. A project focused on serving those who served while beautifying Billings, one cut and trim at a time. We try to give back to the community any way we can, everywhere we can. This was another way for us to give back, to get people together, to show support for veterans. In Billings, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. An arrest this afternoon surrounding a crosstown arson case that's captivated the attention of neighbors near Senior High. 33-year-old Calder Strodman was arrested last night and booked into the Yellowstone County Jail after he suspected of setting fire to two vans outside Billings Senior High Sunday. He faces felony criminal mischief, theft, and arson charges. Police believe the fire started after a botched attempt to siphon gasoline. And just a half hour later, another fire was started outside the Billings HRDC. That left a man and his two dogs homeless. No arrest has been made in that case. More turnover at the top of Billings Hospital leadership. This time, St. Vincent's Healthcare has announced that its president is leaving next month after accepting a new job. Jen Alderfer became the St. V's leader in December of 2021. Her last official day will be October 20th after accepting a job at LifePoint Health based out of Nashville. The departure comes a year after Billings Clinic CEO Dr. Scott Elner resigned, followed by a number of other clinic leaders in turmoil. Brian Johnson, the president of Intermountain Health's Western Colorado market, will serve as Aldifer's interim replacement. On this Wednesday afternoon, we're here at the maze at Grandpa's Farm, and it's the entrance to the Nightmare Before Christmas-themed maze. 30 years. Can you believe it's been that long since that fantastic movie came out? But we also had some fantastic weather. Looking and feeling a little bit more like fall, even though fall's not quite here yet. That's coming in Saturday morning at 12.50, just after midnight tonight. But for the most part, we're going to have some really nice weather for today. There are changes coming. Chances for rain, gusty wind, and even some mountain snow, thunderstorms too. So sometimes when you get too much rain, that could cause you to say, good grief but you don't have to be Charlie Brown to appreciate that. And speaking of Charlie Brown, Alina Howder also has a story about something that could be mistaken for the Great Pumpkin. You won't have to go far to find the Great Big Pumpkin as it's right here in Lockwood. The man who grew this gorgeous gourd believes it might be the largest ever grown in the state of Montana. Get on my back. Whether it's playing with his pup there Jiffy. There you go, okay, jump off. Or going out for a hunt. Right now it's birds, but I'll be elk hunting soon. 30 year old Joe Nigro has a lot of passions in life. I think positivity will feed this pumpkin. But none are as unique as his love for growing giant gourds. I've just been intrigued with it my whole life, so how could you not be? It's been three years since the insurance salesman brought his pumpkin passion to life. My first one was 900 pounds and it cracked, so we brought it to the dump and weighed it. Last year it was 554 and it got fifth place in Wyoming in a Wyoming way off, so and this is year three. Instead of smashing pumpkins, he's trying to smash a record. July 5th is when this flower was pollinated and it was just this big. So this is like a 70, 77 day old pumpkin. This year three pumpkin is estimated to be over 1300 pounds. It's over the state record. It just needs to stay true to measurements is all. And we got to make sure no one else grows a bigger pumpkin this year. Since 1258 pounds is the current pumpkin record for Montana. And then you just bring it down. He's got a pretty gourd shot with his Atlantic giant pumpkin. It came from a pumpkin that was 2058 pounds uh, grown in Connecticut. So it's definitely, it knows how to be big. It's just got to get there. The giant gourd stands on top of 750 square feet of root system. And it'll be a feat to take to Rapid City, South Dakota for the great downtown pumpkin festival. You kind of form a basket with straps and ropes. And then the guys at Case Construction, they're going to bring a tractor over. And then you're going to 
hopefully just pick it up and plop it in a truck or, or a trailer. And after Nigro hopefully brings back the state record, the gourd will be put to good use. It's going to go to the Laurel Pumpkin Patch. I talked to those guys and they thought it would be cool for everybody to kind of see it and gawk at it. In Lockwood, Alina Howder, MTN News. Montana State University's fall student enrollment is the largest in its 130 year history, nearly doubling numbers versus its competitor in Missoula. According to MSU officials, 16,978 students are pursuing higher education this fall. That's a 2% increase over last year. The number solidifies MSU's position as the largest university in the four-state region of Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. The University of Montana's 2023 numbers aren't out yet, but the school reported 9,955 last fall. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2 Critical Care. See how this new program is helping foster kids find stability in a world that often doesn't have much. And later in sports, once one of the smallest kids on the field, see how this harlotan engineer transformed into a freight train as one of the best players in Class C. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.